Hello and welcome back. This is a film about helping you improve your vocabulary, especially when talking about towns or cities or the place you live. So how to describe buildings and places. So, <clears throat> excuse me, when you're describing a city, firstly, you need to understand the importance of architectural terms. Architectural means how the buildings were designed and how they were built. So what sort of shapes are they? What sort of colours are the materials that they're made from? And um, some of the benefits of being able to describe different buildings and spaces obviously helps you when you're talking to your friends or your colleagues or your classmates about where you live, where you're going and perhaps where to meet them. But also if you're studying things to do with places like geography or buildings, like the built environment or civil engineering or something like that, in your essays, in your reports and in your presentations for your university course, you'll need to be able to describe different buildings and different spaces between those buildings and towns and places. So you can think of really four different types of words that are used to describe buildings. So firstly, it's the type of building. Is it a skyscraper, like a big tall apartment block, uh, or a skyscraper that has um, different office buildings in it over many, many floors? So it's a very high building, usually in a bigger city. An apartment block is a literally a block of apartments built one on top of another. So that's different to a townhouse, which is a house in a town. So a townhouse, something that is very, very common uh, for people who live in cities or, or towns. A bungalow is different to a townhouse because a bungalow is built only on the ground floor. So it doesn't have a first, second or third floor above the ground floor. The next category of words are the architectural features, how the building is made, what it looks like, and um, the sort of shape and elements, the parts of the building. So like the facade, the front of the building, like the skin of the building, its roof, the windows, the doors, the chimney, those sort of things, if it has a chimney, for example. The third category are the things that the building is made from, the materials that it's made from. This could be brick, concrete, glass, or wood, for example. There's many, many others. And then what's the style or the kind of shape of the building? So is it a modern building? Is it an older traditional building? Has it got particular flourishes or designs within that building that make it a particular style? For example, Gothic. For example, you might see a Gothic church or a Gothic cathedral. So if we take uh, the first one of those words, the skyscraper. So a skyscraper is a very tall building with many stories and here's one in the picture. So usually at least 100 meters tall, 330 feet tall. They're often a very modern type of building built with modern building materials like steel frame and the glass curtain walls as it's shown in the photo here. And these are built for many different purposes, things like offices, hotels, apartments, shops, retail stores, those sort of things. So it looks very modern, very sleek, very cool, very clean lines. It's not fussy with large windows and it's often plonked or built right in the middle of large cities where land is very limited. So instead of building outwards and across the land, a skyscraper is built up, so it doesn't use much land, but it can house a lot of people doing a lot of different things. 
So now you try. You try using these words, perhaps stop the film here, choose one of these words and try and describe it. Use it in a description of perhaps where you live or the city or town that you move through in your daily life. So for example, you might see a building or you might live or work in a building that has large windows. And perhaps those windows are embedded, built into a building that is made from brick or concrete, and it's a very modern style. So perhaps you could link those three words in a description of where you are right now. So pause the film and come back later. So there are other words that we can use to help us tell other people or write in our work where the buildings are. So there's three types of words that will help us here. Prepositions, words like in or on, near, next to or between. There are direction words, things like north, south, east, west, left and right, straight in front, behind, those sort of words. And we could also use popular and famous landmarks, like other famous buildings. Perhaps you've got a famous river nearby. Perhaps there's a large park that local people would know about. So you could say where the building is that you're describing or where you are now relative to other famous buildings or rivers or other things um, using prepositions and directions to help the other person understand where you are. You can also use words like adjectives and quantifiers to explain and describe how big the building is that you're talking or writing about. So in the picture here, we have a very large building, a very tall building at the back and a very short, smaller building at the front of the picture. So adjectives are very useful. For example, tall, short, wide, narrow, large, and small in this sort of situation. We could also use quantifiers, how many of these things are there that we're describing. So words like a lot of, many, few, or some. Try and practice those words now so you get the pronunciation good. A lot of, many, few, or some. So have a go. Stop the film. Here's a famous building. It's in Australia, if you haven't seen it before. It's the uh, Sydney Op Opera House. And perhaps you can describe what it looks like. How big is it? What is it next to? So here's an example. The Sydney Opera House is a beautiful building that looks like big white sails. It's located in Sydney. Australia and is one of the most famous landmarks in the world. In this picture, you can see the Opera House at sunset. The sky is orange and pink and the building looks even more beautiful against this colourful backdrop. It's a truly stunning sight. One more try. Here's an example of a very famous building called Big Ben in London. Big Ben is the actual bell inside this uh, very beautiful clock that is a London landmark that a lot of people know. It's very famous across the world. So use quantifiers, use adjectives, use the words we've been talking about to describe Big Ben here. Where is it? What sort of location is it at? So here's an example. The picture shows Big Ben, a famous clock tower in London. It's tall and has a big clock face. You can see many other buildings around Big Ben. The picture was taken from higher up, so you can see a lot of the city. The buildings are all different shapes and sizes, and some of them are even taller than Big Ben. The sky is blue and the weather looks sunny. It's a beautiful day in London. So when 
you are saying that in perhaps a presentation or you're writing that in your report or assignment, the reader or the listener to your words can really get a good picture, can imagine what it's like in and around uh, London near where Big Ben is. I hope that's helped. Thanks very much for listening. See you again next time. Bye.